What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going over five things I am leaving behind. So these are five big changes that I am making in my business for 2023. And I think they are going to have impact on mine. And maybe you can apply these to your business as well. Let's see. If you're new to my channel, I'm a Canadian reseller. I'm a mom to two girls, a wife. I work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and I love to sell used clothing. Like it is my jam. And here on YouTube is where I share everything about my business and my journey reselling. So let's just jump right into this because I'm excited. So we are going to count backwards we're going to start with number five and we're going to work our way down to number one and number one is like a huge thing number five on my list is i am no longer sourcing items that retail for under fifty dollars and i know like listen hear me out but the reality is items that retail for under fifty dollars rarely sell for over $50. I'm trying to raise my ASP here in 2023. So it just doesn't make sense to source those items anymore because I know I'm not going to get the return that I want. Now, I know you're arguing there are items that sell for more than $50 that retail for $50 and there are exceptions to every rule. But generally, I do this I want to say often some examples of brands that I do this with are Aritzia, like Wilfred brand stuff, TNA, Sunday Best, uh, Lulu items. If they don't retail for over $50, I am going to do my best, my absolute best to not source them this year because there's just no way I'm going to be able to sell them for a good dollar and hit the ASP that I want. Also probably making the profit margin I want. Now, if I'm finding these items for like 50 cents, a dollar, yeah, of course, but that is not realistic to the cost of goods of what I find locally. And part of this is also like comp searching. And I heard this really cool comment where someone said that they look up what other people are asking for the item and then they look up what the items are selling for. And typically I used to just go straight to the sold what are the solds I would price from there but I actually like this advice so I'm going to start looking at what are items similar items listed for that style or that brand and then what are the solds and trying to find that happy medium typically though when I am looking at solds I'm pricing items on the high end I'm adding a little bit more and I'm hoping that I'm going to get a good offer right so I do accept reasonable offers so say I'm looking up comps they range from 40 to 70 I'm probably gonna list at 75 or 80. Uh, now also understand that most of the items I am now selling in my closet retail for over $100 or around that $100 mark. I'm gonna start on the higher end and then be able to accept reasonable offers. And this is also helping me meet that profit margin that I'm hoping for. And for me right now, I'm hoping for over a $30 profit margin on each item. And that is after cost of goods and platform fees. So I kind of have little pieces to this puzzle, but I think that this is going to be a game changer for me. People always want a better deal. Like they always want a deal on these platforms. Now, this is what people are accustomed to in the secondhand market, getting a deal. So I think you have to start your price higher so that you can still give a deal and be happy with what you're accepting. All right. Number five was not sourcing low ASP items. Number four is I am no longer doing tasks that automation can. Yep, you heard me right. I am no longer doing tasks that automation can. And like the two things that come to mind for me are sharing and cross-listing. And you're probably thinking, what is going on, Tabs? You've been promoting sharing for a while. And I have, but I was using an application that still required some babysitting. And recently I just switched over to Posh Sidekick. What a game changer. It is an app-based one. I no longer have to babysit. It is a set and leave. It's doing my offers. It's doing my share to parties. It's replying to low ball offers. I love it. It's a little, little bit of pettiness in there. Um, but it really has changed the, the way I'm running my business where before I always used to have my laptop open. Uh, even if we were traveling, we, you know, if we were in a hotel, I'd have to open my laptop, let it run, do its business all day, leave it open all night, turn the brightness down on my monitor. If you resonate with this, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. This is where Posh Sidekick has changed it. It is an app on my phone that I don't even have to open anymore. I am like, I, I don't know. Why did I wait so long to switch? Why was I so loyal to that other sharing automation tool? I don't know. 
It was easy. It was something I'd used for a long time. But going forward, I am going to shout Posh Sidekick from the rooftops. If you have not tried it and you want to give it a shot, I do have a referral code. Of course, you guys know I'm going to do a shameless plug here. If you use the referral code TABS, T-A-B-S, uh, I get a little small kickback when you sign up. And uh, yes, I very much appreciate it. But you guys know I would not tell you something if I didn't firmly believe it, if it didn't work for me in my business, and if it wasn't bringing results. That's the bottom line. That's what I believe in in this channel. And uh, yeah, this is a game changer. I actually had in here, holy shit balls, like, you know, Britney Spears when she does that. That's the, that's the voice that comes in my head when I want to talk about Posh Sidekick. I recommend it. Give it a shot. If you're not happy with your sharing service or you want to be able to turn off that computer and run it from your phone, this is the app for you. You don't have to have the app open. It literally just does it all. And you can do multiple closets like ugh, my mind is blowing. Anyways, okay, that was number four. Uh, that is a really big change that is going to free up some time for me. I am actually working with someone on some beta testing for some new so cross-listing software. And I think it's also gonna be a game changer, but can't talk about it yet as soon as i have details and everything is good and finalized i you guys will be the first to know okay you will be the first to know number three and this one is like it's gonna hit you work time is work time i am famous just like you guys for scrolling on my phone sending memes to friends answering phone calls doing voice messaging like i sometimes do everything besides the listing that I'm supposed to be doing. And I have decided in 2023 that I am no longer wasting my work time. I only have small pockets to work on my business. And when I'm not working efficiently, I get behind on my sourcing, I get behind on my listing, putting my inventory away, sending out my shipping. Like it's just a domino effect. I know that I have to prioritize my time when I'm doing that, when I'm working on my business so that I can enjoy the hours that I am not working. And that is usually after 5 p.m. on weekdays and weekends. I do not resell on weekends. That is my family time. That is my downtime, my fill my cup time, my outdoor and nature time. So in order to keep getting the results that I want and to keep getting the results that I'm striving for and to hit the goals that I set in December for 2023, I have to learn to use my time more wisely. And I do think that as a reseller, I produce pretty good ROI on my time, but I want to raise my hourly wage. In 2023, I want to do my year-end video and say, this is where I was last year. And this is, this is where I am this year. And I know I can do it. That is one piece to the puzzle. I don't know. Do you guys, I, I, I'm asking this question, but it is rhetorical. Do you guys waste your work time? <laughs> I know the answer. We all do it. So let's make some changes and go forward this year. Number two on my list is to diversify my business. And I am diversifying my business in different areas, not just reselling, but I'm going to talk about the diversification of my business here in the reselling world and doing reselling. And by doing this, I mean selling on more platforms. I keep saying I sell on other platforms, yet I haven't been making very many sales anywhere else and I haven't been consistently cross-listing. And it's just like this little web of me not following through with my commitments to myself and I'm just letting myself down. So 2022 taught us that we do not have control of platforms, that they can turn our closets on and off, on and off whenever they want. They actually have control of our sales and it has brought a lot of tears, a lot of frustration and a lot of disappointment to resellers. So I think 2022 taught us some really hard lessons that we do not have control of our business being on other platforms. But what we do have control of is how many platforms we choose to sell on. And I think this 2023 tabs is committing to selling on other platforms. And the reason why I really firmly believe in this is that every platform has its niche, like has the things that sell best on there. For me, it's Poshmark selling my modern stuff. I get top dollar. Etsy, I love to sell my vintage pieces. I get top dollar there. eBay, I like to sell my leathers and my unique pieces, things that are like 
really hard to find. And Depop, just my quirky Y2K stuff. I literally have a platform for each kind of niche of my business. And typically I am actually getting more money on those platforms than the other platforms because people that are looking for those items are specifically looking on that platform. So it doesn't make sense for me to list all those cool items I have just on one platform, especially when I know I won't get top dollar. So if anything, if you start diversifying, maybe look at what is your inventory and what other applications do you think you could get more money for those items on? And if you're not sure, this is where you do the research and you go onto these other platforms and you search the items that you currently have in your closet or in your eBay store and you find out if you can get more money on other platforms. But for me, this is a huge step. Um, also, one little pro tip about these other platforms is that I actually raise the price if I know the item will fetch more money on that platform. And I know people are going to be like, you can't do that. Listen, my business, my rules, I can price however I want. And so can you. Price wisely, know your item's worth on each platform. For me, it is not a one price is all everywhere. Okay. So that's just my little pro tip. Take that with a grain of salt and do what works for you. Okay. Number one, which is my favorite. This is probably like the biggest change that I am making in 2023 is letting AI write my descriptions. I know I've been talking about this so much lately and you guys are probably like, okay, tab, we get it. But this is how much I think this is going to change my business. And I just want to put a little disclaimer here. I am not sponsored by them. I am not getting any kickbacks. There is no benefit to me if you sign up for Magiscriptor. It is just how firmly I stand behind the technology and it is reseller specific. It is affordable, which is like a huge thing. What it does for me is it allows me to work more efficiently in my business and save time. Because I can create these detailed, unique descriptions for unique, quirky items that I sell, I am able to focus on either listing a couple more items a day or sourcing or working on YouTube videos. Like there's other areas of my business I can work on, but maybe you just want to work in less time and increase your hourly wage. This is what I think AI technology is going to allow for us, and it's only going to get better. It's only going to grow more. Yeah, I don't know. This is just such a game changer. So for me, the biggest change that I am making in 2023 is not writing all my descriptions. And uh, I think it's going to be a game changer for a lot of people. Okay, so I want to give you guys a pro tip on this. And this is what I have been doing. So I have some really unique, quirky, vintage type pieces that I sell. And it can be hard to come up with the keywords. So here's the steps I go through. I know it sound, it's going to sound like complicated, but the more you do it, the quicker you get. And I can literally do this within a minute. So what I do now is I put the item into Google Lens. I take a quick scan of similar items. I look for keywords. I, then I pop into my Posh app and write the title using the applicable keywords that I'm finding in similar listings, right? So now you've created this keyword friendly SEO optimized searchable title. Copy, paste it into Magiscriptor and let it do its magic. Let it process. At the bottom, I will put in one of my signatures, which might be like my pit to pit length measurements, whatever you want to do. And I copy all. I take that entire description, go back to Posh and paste it in the descriptor. And then all I have to do is do my measurements, type that those couple in and fill out the rest of the categories on Posh. I am telling you, I'm creating listings in less than a minute each. Like that means in an hour, I could list 60 items if they were all photographed. Now that's ridiculous. I don't think I could actually do that. I would get distracted probably 10 times, but it is possible. That's what I couldn't do before. I couldn't consistently come up with unique descriptions on unique pieces without getting fatigued and having to take breaks. I think this just, yeah, it streamlines my business. So that's my pro tip. That's what I've been doing. And I think once you do it a few times, you'll realize, oh my gosh, this is super easy. I need like this, 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 and it's copy, paste, copy, paste, and you're done. And you didn't even have to think about it. Okay, guys, that is it. These are the five things that I am changing in 2023. These are big changes that I'm making, but I want to know what are you changing your business? What are you doing differently? What are things that you're leaving behind in 2022? And what are you rolling in to 2023? drop them down below. I can't wait. And maybe there's a few other little changes I could make 
that uh, that you're doing. So I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you enjoy this video, you need to check out Danica Thrifty Stew. She did a similar video last week and I loved the idea of it. I told her I want to do something similar. I actually haven't watched it yet because I didn't want it to influence my video. So I am watching it as soon as you guys see this and I want to see if her and I were on like the same wavelength, what kind of ideas she came up with and maybe there's a couple things that she's doing that I can do as well. All right, I hope this video helps you in your reselling business. I hope it has lit a fire under you, given you some ideas for 2023 and just generally helps you in your reselling business. If you enjoy it, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Also make sure you tap subscribe on the way out because lots of you guys are not subscribed. I am wishing you all many sales. I'm sending them to you and I'll see you next time. Bye.